Cup's about winning trophies. I'm inexperiencing a lot of those things. Welcome to the American Red Devils podcast. I'm John. I'm Alex. And we are bringing you the best Manchester United news from this side of the pond. Woo, sir. How you doing? How you doing? It was a 1-0 victory at Old Trafford against West Ham. David Moyes, tactical genius, back in the house. Still not getting that win. Um, it was an own goal that took it. But you know what? United deserved it. Played well. You have to be said. Uh, zero shots and goal for the Hammers. But good win. Important win. On to Europe. Sir, I mean, I thought it was a good win. Like you said, uh, David Moyes, tactical genius, coming back into the place where he can't win. I think that's 14 times he's gotten knocked back at Old Trafford. You love to see it. Uh, he's the worst, David Moyes. Uh, don't like him. Don't rate him. West Ham playing well, obviously, without Lingard, sir. And I thought it was a great shift at the back, sir. Dino played well. Harry played well. Luke Shaw played well. We created chances. I thought we tried a little more up front, not as much as I would like to see, but we were braver trying the one touch pass, trying to be a little faster in attack. And we created some chances. I think positioning, we're missing that knock locked on number nine. You saw Cavani could have been at the end of a few of those crosses, some headers, Marcus Rashford looking at you. But regardless, I'm starting to see glimpses. So that was a good performance at home. Good performance. And it was a good response, you know, maybe from a mixed bag uh, against AC Milan midweek. So it was important. You know what you're going to get against the Hammers. You know that they were going to pack it in, make it difficult for us. But we did play like a little bit higher tempo, had some good chances to be to be fair. And I like what you pointed out. If Cavani was at the end of a couple of those crosses, he certainly would have had a couple goals today, I would think. Um, but it all around altogether a good performance from United very well at the back right I think McGuire standout had like an unbelievably good game Luke as well as you mentioned he was good going forward and tidy at the back it's a team 11 performance something to be proud of sir West Ham they didn't make it easy for us but uh we, we controlled it pretty well I mean they didn't make it easy but going forward we gave them nothing really I mean like for maybe 10 minutes what right after we scored the first goal kind of back and forth but really we locked it down we closed up shop uh, they didn't have much to do, and I thought we kind of turned the screws pretty good, and Greenwood looked really sharp, hit the bar, another great save. Fabianski, he had to do some work today. So again, you know, it's not exactly the not United we want to see. It's not exactly the spectacular home performance, but you're starting to see some encouraging movement, chance creation, et cetera, like we've been talking about on this pod. I mean, it's not the nil-nils. The nil-nils we saw – uh, the past couple of weeks, there was nothing doing. Uh, this game had something doing, sir. So maybe not a full 90, but enough. I thought we were a little braver. Some of that didn't come off, though. But you, they got to try, sir. You know, we tried to do our best impression of Man City, try to break down a team. And some one twos didn't come off. Aaron Wambasaka looking at you. But you love to see them trying because that's what we need right now. No, you're right. And, you know, all the performances at this point in the season, with the amount of injuries we have right now and just the amount of games, they're not all going to be vintage stuff. A little bit is just grinded out results. Today kind of felt like that. The boys, certainly, I, I think they stepped it up and kind of kept the pressure on, didn't really let West Ham grow into it. Um, but it's about it's just about cobbling together results. And that three points is all that mattered. That clean sheet was all that mattered. Uh, the no subs, it's like, a, it's like a Fergie move back in the day. You know, like not doing any subs, but it worked. So... It's a big three points because, I, you know, it's one of those teams that you just don't like playing because they always make it difficult for you. Dude, and shame on David Moyes to come out the way he came out. I mean, it's just like everyone's trying to Mourinho us. Like every single goddamn team that plays us wants to play like the most boring style of game. They don't want to come at us. They don't want to attack in any way, shape or form. They just want to pack it in. And as a fan, it's rough to watch. But that's what the other team wants to set up like. Right. And so. The more we break down teams, maybe we'll see variability in how they set up. But, I mean, we're going to Milan or we're going to the San Siro. It's going to be the same thing. They got the away goal, and they're going to set up to defense. Or it's just going to be the same. It's more the same. I don't see any team changing how they're going to approach United through the rest of the season. So, as a fan, it's frustrating, but this is kind of the way we are. This is like this is like who how they play us, sir. 
Yeah, I mean, they know what um, what we're good at and what we're not good at. And that's what's going to be so important to get some of those creative players that could take a burden off of our boy Bruno Fernandez, i.e. Paul Pogba, I Don, Donny Van de Beek, even Juan Mata. Um, because, like you said, everyone's packing it in. AC Milan packed it in last time we played at home and made it difficult for us. We're really good on the counter. It's going to be the same thing. You know, they know it. Shame on us. Do it once. They're going to do the same thing uh, when we play them at their house. No, absolutely. And, you, you know, one thing that kind of showed – Today was the balance and attack, right? Once we had Greenwood going through the middle, the left-hand side looked dangerous, but Aaron Wambasaka wasn't clicking on the right. Dan James, he puts in a shift coming back. He does really well coming back, but that end product going forward, sir, you know, Ole didn't get his, the the right winger he wanted this summer, and we're starting to we've seen it all all year. And you have to always hit. We got to beat that Glazers out drum because the balance and attack should be much better from United, especially in these teams that want to defend. And we need to be sharper on the right-hand side. And maybe I was thinking a mod, you know, which especially when it was nil nil, I was thinking maybe a mod would give us a different dimension there with Aaron Juan Basaka. But you know, we're being, we're being hamstrung by the Glazers. No, we are because he shouldn't have just had, you know, attacking options. He should have more midfield reinforcements. We should have an extra center back. We, they should be reinforcing and investing in this team because there's so much promise. Um, so that he was left a little bit, you know, shorthanded, of course, we're going to be shorthanded in perpetuity under those, uh, Glazer owners, unfortunately, sir. But like you said, I think Dan James stayed in because he looked so good, uh, when West Ham had the ball. So he kept his role there, even though he gave the ball, it wasn't his best performance going forward, especially on the break when he made the wrong pass to Bruno. Um, but defensively he was good and it was like a full 11 defensive performance today. And that's what just shut him down. Zero shots on target. Love to see it. No, big improvement and, you know, uh, going class half full here. Captain's performance from Harry Maguire, right? Got the elbow early, shook it off, back right head in the ball. You know, he's in the mix on everything, and he, he played very well. Harry played very well today. One of his best games in the United shirt, didn't back down. It's almost like getting hit, hit early with that uh, elbow from Antonio. Kind of showed a little dog in him, sir. That's why I need to see more of Maguire. I need to see a little more dog in Maguire. I like that point, sir. It's also, I think the whole team showed a little bit more dog. We were like real, we we're getting to those 50, 50 balls. I think United played like a little bit of an edge that you usually see from a West Ham side, you know, a little dirty, a little gritty old English. And we kind of brought that to him today. And Harry was like the standout because he did have a captain's performance. It was like really kind of held the line all over the box, just clearing everything out against a big um, Mikel Antonio player that probably is not that easy to defend against. <laughs> Absolutely, sir. Uh, you know, uh, Antonio rocking the short short, sir. You know, you, you, you <laughs> <laughs> yoked city, bro. Yoked. <laughs> uh, quick PSA for the podcast. If you like the American Red Devils, we are for fans by fans. What that means to us is we do not have any sponsors on the podcast. We do not have any corporate sponsors pulling the strings behind the scenes. We are fan owned uh, and fan supported. And one of the best ways that you can support us as fans of the podcast and of the greatest club in the world, sir, is via Patreon. You can visit our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash American Red Devils. We're giving away pins, stickers, shirts, and scarves for different tiers. You can support us anything from $1 a month to $20 a month. It's a great way to support the podcast and independent fan content, sir. We also have Lots of new merch into our online store. If you don't like Patreon, just pick up uh, America Red Devils blanket, sir. We have a great uh, fleece blanket in stock. Literally on Friday, we put it in the store. We have new poster prints. Those are from Stan Chow with our badge logo. We have the new beanies, masks, shirts, sir, scarves, everything in between. So if you want to support independent fan content and you want to look good while doing it, grab something in our online store, www.americaredevils. Click on store. And while you're there, check out our amazing blog, completely fan generated sir that's how we operate the american red devils are giving me that biased fan take from the couch you love to see it sir four fans five fans baby wouldn't have it any other way hashtag glazers out hashtag glazers out that's a good point you got to go to our store we have a glazers out sale it, it, it never ends <laughs> that's, that's the thing in american red devils glazer out sale never ends 9.99 get yourself a green gold scarf uh for when we go back to old trafford you can show them the colors to know that they should get out Another great way that you can support the pod is writing a review on iTunes. It is one of the best ways for us to be found, and it's an absolutely free way to uh, support the pod. All you have to do, write a five-star review on iTunes. Uh, if it's got some cheeky banner, even better, and send a screenshot to AmericanRedDevils at gmail.com with your mailing address, and we will get you some stickers right away, sir. What else we got? 
Sir, you know, just uh, want to say a big thank you to everyone who does support us on Patreon and anyone who's ever purchased anything from our online store. Alex is uh, head of the uh, warehouse logistics, a.k.a. Uh, his garage has all the uh, <laughs> the merchandise uh, in it. So thank you to everyone. We love the photos of the scarves, the Glacier's Out scarves, uh, the Grace of English football. We want it all scarves. So, you know, thank you to anyone who has taken the time to support this small time operation and you know why we want to be supported by the fans sir so we can say whatever we want right you know there's a lot of big internet youtube podcast outlets they're hamstrung by the club or they're trying to say the right thing because they want player interviews etc but we will give it to you straight and we have no strings attached sir we own, fan owned and operated baby and that's what it should be because we shouldn't be pulling punches when we're talking about Avram Glazer getting a hundred million dollar payday when we're not getting any signings. And it could be a bunch of bullshit from Eddie Woodward, director of football, et cetera. So got to keep the club honest, sir. Got to speak our minds. That's why we're the bias fan take. We, we can't have any sponsors because we got, we got a lot of opinions, sir, <laughs> <laughs> especially about this poor, poor ownership and even uh, worse leadership in terms of Eddie Woodward just pulling the strings. Unbelievable. Um, but say, we can talk about the Glazers all day, sir. You know, we could do a whole pot on them, just no, that. You know, I, I just want to say that's important to us that we can speak our minds here at American Red Devils and, you know, all, all views and uh, biased fan opinions. Welcome, sir. Speaking of biased fan opinions, let's break down this amazing match, sir. Instant classic Manchester United won <laughs> West Ham nil Old Trafford. It's been 29 games this season. Let's get into that lineup. We had Dino, number two. In net, Luke Shaw, McGuire, Lindelof, center back pairing, Juan Basak on the right, Fred McTominay, midfield, James on the left, Fernandez in the hole, Greenwood on the right, and Rashford through the middle. That did those front three did change quite a bit in this game. But what was your gut reaction seeing the starting eleven? I mean, the big thing for me was seeing Rashford back. Thankfully, he was fit because uh, I think we needed him today. Added another just attacking element that you know without him in it, it's hard to find a lot of goals in this team with all the injuries we have. So. That was, of course, what, what I'd like to see. Fred McTominay, not a, you know, not a lot of surprises in this 11, sir. Given the amount of injuries we've had, it was basically picking itself. The Rashford being being available. Obviously, Dan James is going to keep his starting spot. They just they ain't that many other bodies to throw in at this point other than kids. So this has got to be good enough to break down West Ham. You knew it was going to be tough doings because they were going to pack it in. Absolutely. I was pumped to see Rashford uh, on the team sheet. Although I know he's playing injured, right? He's got to have a sort of painkiller injection. Then he's got a shoulder he needs surgery on as well. Then he's got the Euros coming up this summer. Marcus Rashford, you know, remember the back injury? Played too much? This is kind of one of those where maybe you should have saved him for AC Milan. It is a big game. So, look, uh, Rashford, credit to him stepping up. My next focus was the bench. Obviously, I'm looking at Ahmad. But then, like, thin, sir. Thin. Real thin. We got Bishop on the bench. <laughs> Grant. <laughs> it's like Lee Grant, you know. And then you're talking about Shortire, Williams. And you're, like, looking at the hitters. You're like, the hitters are Bailly. Matic. Debe, Telus, Matic. It's like, not a lot doing on the bench. And that's where these injuries are creeping in. I'm worried. A lot of games. A lot of games. And we also didn't reinforce in January, you know, taking out a hundred million dollars. <laughs> Avram Glazer took out a hundred million dollars. Could have spent that on a couple of reinforcements to be used right now in a push, you know, back then when the title was very much in place or not so much now. Sir, Tom Brady signed a new deal for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So a big you know, one. I heard it was pretty big too. Somewhere. <laughs> Not Manchester United. Hey, sir, you want to jump in this match breakdown? Absolutely. So that first half uh, game kind of came out as expected. West Ham were packing it in and United were trying to play quick enough to break them down. Probably took about to the 25th minute for the first good opportunity. It was a great chance for Rashford at the far post. Greenwood with a really good ball, uh, but Rash couldn't get his head on it, sir. We were freaking out after this one. Uh, tell me your thoughts. So this was like FIFA when you just hit the B button a little too hard. You know, you kind of chump it. Whatever reason, you, it, heading the ball in FIFA is impossible, and it looks impossible for Marcus Rashford here. He's had a bunch of headers the last few games. I think he needs to start. Uh, hey, Edison Cavani, get some, give this kid some lessons before you go, because apparently he's leaving, and Marcus Rashford could learn a lot from him and how to head the ball. Because Cavani all day, dunkaroo, double dunkaroo, get that frost, vanilla frosting, baby. This is in the net if Cavani's in. No, you're absolutely right, because it's a great opportunity, a great ball where, you know, it's always going to be tough getting chances against West Ham, but it was a good curler, and 
Rashford's got to at least get it on target, connect, challenge the goalkeeper a bit. But uh, I got a thing to he can learn from Cavani, can learn from Fellaini, sir. He knew a thing or two about heading. Um, a little bit later, Greenwood in the 30th minute put in a great ball again, but nobody was the end of it. These are kind of those chances you're talking about where if you had a Cavani, it's a poacher goal. He was just that, you know, nobody was running in. Thir- yeah, that, it's just that it seems that front three, they're switching up so much. No one's really that just locked on number nine playing that, get in front of the, getting, go to the front post, go to the back post, split the center backs. Like that movement, the focus, the focal point isn't there. And that's why when you saw Cavani earlier this season, he was doing so well, right? And it's with these three, James, Rashford, and Greenwood, I don't think, even though they do switch where they're playing on the different wings, I don't think no one, even if they are number nine, is really focused there, right? It's hard to be switching in a game, not to know, hey, you're locked on. No, we don't have that kind of out-and-out pure play number nine like Cavani is so good at. I mean, Greenwood was showing that a little bit today. His movement was good. You know, he was moving around pretty well, making some of those runs, but it it was often his ball that he was putting in that nobody was at the end of. Uh, But speaking of Greenwood... But we need it, sir. Think about it. RVP, Van Esteroy, Rooney, when he did it for United. I mean, like, all great United teams, they all have that player. Multiple of those players. Yeah. We need him. We need one of those, sir. We need, like, you know, you know, we never up. replaced Lukaku. I mean, arguably. You, yeah. you know, like, Cavani's your <laughs> Galu, sir. We got a Galu. We got Cavani. Uh, that's the Glazers for you. Anyway, another good chance. 37th minute. This was the best chance of the half. Greenwood put in a great curling effort that Fabianski just pushed and glanced off the post. But this was a good, good chance. I thought this was going in. Unbelievable effort from Greenwood. Thought this was in. Hit it perfectly, Fabianski. Fingertips. Even as it was bouncing up off the turf, uh, this had goal all over it, sir. I, I can't believe he got it. Yeah, after that one, I was starting to worry. Uh, last big chance of the half, 38th minute, Rashford. It was another like far post, glancing header. He got a hold of this one, not a lot of power. This was a little tougher than that earlier chance. Totally, sir. I, I mean, again, just close but no cigar. That was the, that was the first half. That was the first half, sir. Uh, going, in, you know, going into halftime, what do you think Ole was saying to the boys? I saw encouraging things going forward. We didn't give up a lot uh, to West Ham. Obviously, they didn't have any shots, and I thought we were creating chances. I thought we were trying to play a little faster. This was, you know, something's working right now. I mean, we, we saw that big lull, but these three, James, Greenwood, Rashford, I thought McTominay was in the mix. Fred got cut out of position a few times, but, you know, it was they were trying, sir. They were trying, and it was coming off a little bit. So I was saying stick with it, and chances will come. And that's how it felt, right? It was definitely encouraging. You thought a goal would come, sir. United came out the sharper side in the second half, and it didn't take too long. In the 53rd minute. Alex wants to defend here. Oh, and it's in! And Scott McTominay, who got the FA Cup winner here against West Ham, claims the credit. And we've talked about set pieces from West Ham all night. And it's been Luke Shaw who's been taking him, but I thought it might have been an own goal first glance. I thought Dawson headed it in the net. But it's a brilliant, brilliant delivery. Puts it into a... There you go, sir. Neville had his say. Hey, they don't all have to be beauties. They don't all have to be curlers from Bruno Fernandes. Sometimes you just need the ball to go in the back of the net. I'll take that all day long. I think you said it, sir. I take this one to the bank all, all goddamn day. Three points. Check, please. Let's go. Honestly, I was like, <laughs> I'd never been more pumped about an own goal. Anyway, um, right after this, sir, the United, you know, we played a little bit and then kind of West Ham got back in the game for a spell. 60th minute, Bruno did force the keeper into a good save after a nice strike. Um, and then the 74th minute, United break after Diop uh, give the ball away to James, but he passes the ball behind Bruno. This is a great opportunity on the break. James, not so, one of his best passes today. No, I mean, uh, like I think you said it. Dan James is in there for, you know, going back. He tracks back, puts in a shift. He did well, but it's like 74th minute. We're up by a goal. The game's starting to open up. James gets the ball. I feel like his decision-making is not quite there. He had another one where he had Greenwood on the overlap, and if he gets it to him earlier, you know, this one as well. It's, it, this is uh, it's got to go to Bruno, or he's got to switch it to Greenwood, which is the harder pass. He chose the easier pass, and – Got it behind him, but this this one really should have been a goal if Dan James gets this pass. 
That one, yeah, there are a couple opportunities right now just to kill the game in the 70th minute. Uh, 77th, right? Greenwood hit the post when him and Rashford broke, took it on his own, just slams it against the post. So this is the one where I thought we're going to rue. You know, didn't get that second goal to ice it. Uh, I was a little worried. Great hit from Greenwood. I mean, he's the opposite of Dan James going forward. He's so dangerous. He's like step overs, left foot, drills it, totally beat Fabianski and then hits the post. I mean, unbelievable. He's dying for a goal. He'll get it. He'll get it, sir. He's due. He is due. He's been playing better. You have to say, like his overall game of play, his link up has been really good today. He looked great. So did everything but get the goal. Last notable moment in the game, sir, 80th minute, McGuire put in a great block um, when West Ham were kind of looking threatening. And that was basically all she wrote. United didn't even make a sub, <laughs> which is the first time I've seen that in a long time. But a big three points at home against the Hammers. David Moyes, tactical genius, is going to have to wait on winning at El Trafford <laughs> when he's not a United manager. Sir, doing the double over David Moyes, what do you say? Manchester United fans, look at this point. Sir, we were, we were nervous. A lot of fans were nervous about this game. I was nervous about this game. The three points from this game are big. It's it's getting nervy in the top race for top four. Yeah, I said it. We're in a race for top four. And every game, every three points, it's just like so critical. Keep our second place spot. Got Leicester in the FA Cup, sir. I mean, that, that that's another big game. But as far as league goes, we're done till April 3rd. So uh, kind of chip up that three points, take a break, focus on your up league FA cup, and then hopefully come back. Paul P Donnie Vandebeek looking at you. Cavani easy on leaving, sir. We got a season here. Cavani. Like, it's it's <laughs> going to shut Manchester. up. I, I swear the weather's getting better. In Manchester. <laughs> Cavani, keep saying that. <laughs> do me a favor. Cavani. We need you. We need, we need like at least eight goals from you in this running. Come on, let's go. Let's regroup. Everyone uh, heal their wounds and let's kick on, sir. I'm really hoping that this, you know, break from competition for maybe uh, two weeks we got will go a long way to help United. We've often needed uh, international breaks, sir, especially when injuries have been piling up. And, you know, they might not even let players go an international international break, given what's going on with COVID still in Europe and around everywhere um, in terms of traveling and quarantining and coming back for games uh, like we're seeing. So. We just need to get through these next games, two big games, Europa League, FA Cup, but it's all about making progress in the cup competitions because we got to take home some silverware. It's not going to be the league this year, it looks like, but getting silverware for Ole is massive. No, absolutely. Uh, match stats, Manchester United 63% of the ball to West Ham's 37%. Shots on target, 4 to nothing, sir. You love to see that. United, 12 fouls to West Ham's 2. Cheeky, some yellows, some tactical fouls. I thought... We played it pretty good, sir. No shots on target uh, from West Ham. That is a stat you'd love to see. Uh, the win marks the first time United have done the double over the Londoners since 13-14 when Moyes took over from Sir Alex Ferguson. The result means Moyes remains without a win <laughs> as an away manager at Old Trafford, a sequence that now extends to 11 defeats and 15 attempts in all competitions. And Manchester United have just lost one of their last 23 Premier League games, having suffered three losses in their first six games of the season, sir. That's a big stat, but the nil-nils, you know, that's the one thing people say about Manchester United. Can't play boring football. Nil-nil, I would say. You look in the Webster's Dictionary, boring football, nil-nil. I'm not, I, You know what? I know everybody like gets their uh, panties in a bunch about these nil-nils. I'm more irked about the three threes and the one ones because you know what? Nil-nil means like defense did its job. And some of those nil-nils were against big teams. Scoring boots. And I think it's been the owner, you know, too much onus on Bruno. We need some of those creative elements that kind of take the burden off of him, i.e. Paul Pogba and, and Cavani and Donny. We need him back. Hopefully they're back sooner rather than later. Tonight was the first time since February 2012 against the team should not be named that Manchester United did not make a single substitution in a Premier League match. You said, it, sir, shout out to Sir Alex Ferguson. Hasn't been, it's been a while since back to him. But what do we know? Let's check in with the manager, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. You said before the game that you'd expect a hard game. You got what you expected. Yeah, you always do against uh, West Ham. Uh, or every time you turn up in the Premier League, it's a tough game. Uh, you have to earn the right to make it easy. Uh, we started poorly, so we made it harder for ourselves. But I thought we found our composure and the quality after 15, 20 minutes. It started to get better and better. 
of course, for them, if they won, they would have been closer to the Champions League spaces. So, did you think you were surprised by the first half that they played? They were just containing you. They didn't want to go and attack. No, you know, we're uh, it's two teams that want to defend well and attack well, and uh, I think we we attacked uh, maybe too eagerly to start with. We kept giving the ball away, turnovers, but my, the attitude of my players with the recovery sprints and regrouping was so quick that we never gave them a chance to build momentum or pressure against us. Of course, uh, defensively, you did concede the goal, and as a unit, you played very well. But uh, Harry Maguire specifically yeah. was impeccable today. He played really well, I think. Yeah, Harry has been absolutely top. And of course, when you know you're playing against a team that's got uh, three or four of the best headers of the ball in the league, uh, you know that Harry is important for you. And today, him, Victor, really, really uh, top performance uh, by the defenders. There you go, sir. Ole, Mr. Nice Guy. Shout out to Harry. He did have a hell of a game. Been a lot of criticism for Harry, fair or not fair. Um, should, certainly have, he should certainly have more goals at Manchester United. But that being said, he was immense today against a team that's really good in the air. Shut him down. Nothing doing. No, I just think Harry, uh, look, I think this season's hard on the players. And, you know, I'll give him a pass. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. If Harry finishes strong, Fans come back next season, growing into the captaincy, totally get it. Uh, so, you know, I think the best is yet to come for Harry Maguire. Well said. No, I agree. I think he's only getting better and better, especially as you put better and better players around him and the team just gains in confidence. I think he's growing as a captain. You know, he like took that knock early and was worried, and then he came back even stronger. Sir, you love to see it. Let's check in with the table. Man, shitty, number one, 70 points. They played 30. United, greatest team of all time, 29 games played, 57 points. Leicester City, 29, 56. We got them by a point. And then the Chelsea scum, sir. Hello, hello, hello. You're never going to win three in a row, sir. 29 games, 51 points. We got it by six. It's tight. It's tight. And then we got West Ham at 48, Everton, 46, Tottenham, 45. The team must not be named, 43. <laughs> Amazing. Eighth place. Arsenal, 41. What a riot. Sir, you know, I'm just looking at our fixtures coming up in the league. We don't have to worry about it, but we're just going to touch on it here. April 3rd is when this marathon starts. Right? We got a, we have we have a break. Everyone was, this, was a break? I thought we were still in the middle of an ultra marathon. We've been running it for the last, like, three and a half months. Sir, it's been two years of this, I'll tell you. <laughs> I know. Uh, but starting April 3rd, Brighton, Tottenham, Burnley, Leeds, Timo should not be named, Villa, Leicester, Fulham, Wolves. Brighton fighting relegation. They're a rabid dog. Wounded dog, sir. They're going to be tough. Tottenham, Mourinho, spoiler, tough. Burnley, tough. Leeds, tough. Timo should not be named. Spoiler, Villa. Leicester, Fulham, another relegation fight. They're playing out of their minds right now. And then we got Wolves. Not one easy match. You could say maybe Brighton and Fulham should be. So there'd be wounded dogs. There'd be, you know, there'd be fighting and scrapping. It's, this is going to be very difficult for United. These fixtures, it's like a minefield. It really is tough. And you know what? You're right. So we're in, a, we're in the middle of a battle and we got like a no middle of a war, and we got another big battle coming up. And that's April, and we just need we need we need some reinforcements. We need like some yeah. some troops to come back over the hill after getting patched up, man. We need like we need our we need Pogba back, we need Cavani back, we need Donny back, um, and you can just tell because they look ragged. Bruno looks ragged. Rashi looks ragged. So does Dan. Sir, it's six points. We got six point cushion. No, it's nothing. So I'm saying those dude, and they're no hard, easy games in this league. It's like even Sheffield. Got, I don't play Sheffield. I don't play West Brom. What'd they? And we got Leicester. You know, it's West, like, we got the FA Cup, and they're a tough team. So and they're right on our heels, and they're no easy games. So it's going to be a knife fight all the way, all the way to the end. And then of course we finish with Wolves, sir. <laughs> it's like that's going to suck. <laughs> there might be fans at that game, which is the only thing that would be cool. It's the, it is at the Molyneux, so it won't be an OT. Um, but hey, when the Reds are on the road, you know, some of the best fans come out of the woodworks there. Well, sir, let's, uh, we can keep it, uh, here easy. Let's just rest on these three points, sir. And then, uh, as far as the league goes, we'll be back April 3rd, Brighton, right? Tricky Brighton, Malpe, remember that one, a little crying. 
little, little, little crying penalty, the Panenka penalty where he cried in front of David De Gea, and then we came back and beat him. But they're going to be a tough one. Is it home or away? I, I don't want to put you in the spot, but if you're looking at it. Uh, but uh, you, I have it up here, sir. I believe it is at home at Old Trafford. There yep. you go. So at least the United is playing better at home. We're not going to have fans yet, but that dude, they're <laughs> – they are going to be tough because they're in a scrap. And those teams that are in a scrap, like you said, they're like, they got everything to play for. Well, that's April. But <laughs> today, sir, today, we got Hans and Franz. We got the Europa League banger. Hit it. Sorry, it's two and a half minutes long, man. I can, <laughs> I, I can go for two minutes of this, sir. It's a long, long song. Sir, that's right. We have a next match here. AC Milan versus Manchester United at the San Siro in Milan. There we go, sir. You just turn the music down. And we talk over it. That's how That's how it's done. I just want to be able to hear your voice. It was, it was overshadowing John. We can't have that. <laughs> uh, it's going to be Thursday, March 18th. Sir, 1 p.m. Pacific kickoff time, 4 p.m. Eastern daylight savings. Keeping you on, sir. Can't believe they steal an hour away out of the day. I mean, that should be a crime. Yeah, but then the sunset, you know, then it gets dark at eight o'clock later, you know, in a couple months. And also, this would be, I, you know, this is the only time I'm like jelly. I'm not back home uh, where we grew up in Jersey or New York East Coast because 4 p.m. <laughs> 4 p.m. is like a pretty awesome kickoff time. You know? Yeah, have a, have some dark ales. Exactly. Lifetime versus Milan. Games won five, games drawn one. That was at home at Old Trafford. This past week, games lost five, sir. First time we ever played, May 1958. Manchester United versus AC of Milan. We won 2-1 the European Cup. Milan, they lost to Napoli today after drawing us. They have lots of injuries. No word on Zlatan. Obviously, there's no word on Pogba on our, our end. A lot of injuries for both teams. They have the away goal. I think they're going to be stingy at the San Siro. This one could be uh, a tightrope. This could be a tightrope. It is. And you know what? We have to go for it. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to do exactly what they did last time. They're going to sit back, make us attack, um, and go for it. And United have to play quickly. You know? They really are. There's that song, sir. Speaking of going for it. Or it's growing on me. It's growing on me. <laughs> so, yeah, the, 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 the <laughs> tough start, strong finish. Uh, but, you know, I'm looking at it. Zlatan could be back. It is a maybe for, for Milan. Rebic was back. Hernandez was back uh, against Napoli. So, again, they look to be getting some uh, players back. So Milan's going to be dangerous, sir. I think, you know, like you said, they're second uh, in Serie A. They're nine off the top. Inter is number one, if you can believe it, uh, with who? Romelu Lukaku. Just banging him in, sir. We lost money on that transfer. <laughs> yeah, lost we money they on that transfer. Paid us, sir. I know. And they still haven't paid us. And you know what? I take him right now because he, he would score goals in this team. Yeah, you know, Ole, I, Ole didn't rate him for whatever reason. You know, I do agree, and that's I think Ole is going to realize the plight of being owned by the Glazers, which is you don't you have to work with what you got because once you sell Lukaku and you don't even get paid for him, uh, you're not going to get a replacement, and we haven't. That's really unfortunate, sir. But look, we got a special guest match preview here at the American Red Devils. Our boy Freddie from Denmark. He's an AC Milan fan, but he's our boy. He comes to the UK. He goes to Manchester United games with us. He's a closet United fan. He's an American Red Devil, but, you know, his heart's in Italy. So we figured it'd be great to bring him on the pod, have him, uh, you know, break it down. How'd the first game go? Preview the second game. We call him the uh, Danish Zidane in Zidane. Sorry, he's got the bald. He's got the he's got the bald head. He's as fashionable as Zidane. I'll tell you, when we go to United games, you and me look like we're, we look like we're in boots and jeans and old jerseys. We look homeless. Freddie shows up with like 
you know, the uh, Prada scarf. He's got it going on, you know. So he looks like we call him the Danish Zidane, Zidane, Zidane sir. And it's a one of a kind interview. He is got the best perspective. You know, he is a United fan at heart. He's an AC Milan fan, of course, but he's a, he's a closet United fan. He loves his club, respects it. Um, and it's a, a lot of fun just to get him on the horn. Well, I think he just likes going to Bishop's Blaze, drinking dark ales with us and singing songs for about eight hours before a match. I think I think that's what Freddie likes. <laughs> Can't blame him. I also like that. So without further ado, the interview with the Danish Zinedine Zidane. Here we are with Freddie, the Danish Zinedine Zidane. AC Milan fan, Freddie, you watched the first game. You've been to a few uh, Manchester United games with us. Had, a, had some dark ales, had a blast. What do you make of that first fixture? Well, you know, it's it's always when you have a key battle, let's say, where people, they have a lot of injuries, it always becomes a bit, let's say, sad. Let's, let's use that word. I think you're missing two profiles, which are really something special, right? The end of Pogba and also Rashford, of course, that's, uh, you know, people like to see the best when they have to see a game, especially when it's in the Euro League, right? You know, compared to Champions League, this is... It's not what it used to be, right? We have to be honest about that. You know, sometimes <laughs> I think to myself, it may be better that we exit this shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's because what I was it's saying. A, it's a, you know, it's it's almost a waste of energy. The program is so packed and, you know, you have to play so many games. And then everybody just wants to be in the Champions League, you know. The EuroLeague today, it's, you know, it's not the same, right? You know, it's too many games. It's too many teams, too many bad teams. But, you know, this was almost like a Champions League game that, you know, in the old times, right? So, um, you know, for us, it meant a great deal. We had too many injuries. I think you had too many injuries. I'm hoping we'll see a change in the second leg. Um, but I hear that you got, what, three out of four strikers injured, actually, for West Ham, I think, right? So it's it's pretty bad, actually. Yeah, but we're kind of similar, right? AC Milan's been on a run, right? This year, you didn't expect months... We talked to you, Zlatan's coming back to Milan, and then all of a sudden you're second place in the league. So, you know, when we did the podcast, Alex was saying, hey, AC Milan's really good. They're second in the league. That's kind of why this was a tough mm. match. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I think I think in honesty, if you looked at the odds, right, I think, I think if we won, you would have gotten your money back maybe six times. And if you won, you got your money back 1.8 or something like that. That was kind of the odds <laughs> before the game. Now, after the game, right, I'm going to be a little, you know, I'm going to be proud of my boys here, right? you got to listen to this shit, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> but they, I think, you know, we came, we came with, without five starters, right? And with an average age of, I think, around 23 years old. Imagine that. I think you were pretty hit badly as well. Maybe your average age was around 25. But, um, you know, I think we dug deep. We made it hard for you. And I think you did one thing very wrong was that you didn't play fast enough. I, I like your boy James. I think he did pretty good, you know, on a couple of occasions he nearly got to Calabria, right? He couldn't even, you know, keep up with him on a few meters. I think that was a pretty big chance, you know, and you played it wide on a couple of occasions as well. But there's one thing I was really wondering about, you know, I don't watch Premiership too much, but Bruno Fernandes, excellent, excellent ball, you know, in the middle of the park. And I'm not, I'm not going to talk about that shit because, <laughs> you know, I was the guy... I was the guy, you remember, you know, I, I told you, I said, you know, you should put him in and then you put him in. What does the guy do? You know, Scores. amazing goal, amazing goal. And the delivery from uh, from Bruno, ouch, you know, beautiful. But but besides that, I think Bruno, where was he? He wasn't there, man. I was uh, I was a little bit surprised to, to see that, you know, during your City game, I heard he played absolutely fantastic football, right? So I'm not quite sure what happened in that game. But I think, you know, I think maybe your guys got a little, let's say, surprised about the level we have. And I think that, you know, you take the guys we have in the middle of the park. I think there's some big boys, you know. So, um, you know, it was a good game, good yeah. balanced game. And I think the second leg is going to be interesting. But we need those we need those injuries away, right? We want to see the best players, man. We don't want to see the, the beeline, right? Is Zlatan coming back for the second game? What's the word, Freddie? I know you got you have you have inside info in the AC Milan dressing room, so you know. Of course, you can, man. You can break of course, some news my here Danish brother, my Danish brother scored the goal. You know that the very last minute. <laughs> we know he was a Dane. We know he was a Dane. <laughs> the Viking baby. The Viking. I'm not, I'm not good. The Viking, but I'm not going to comment on your goalie's reaction to that goal. By the way, but uh, I'll leave that for you was guys. That bad? Right? What do you that think? Was, uh, was that was that on Hendo? Ah shit! He should he should have gone to that. Let's let's be honest. The guy is has done a great job while the gay is gone. On you know, but he's I'm not sure he's out with what personal things or something like that. He I don't baby. get the background to that. You probably know more about that than I do. Yeah, he had a baby girl. Yeah. So that's why. Yep. 
Ah, okay. But I think, you know, he did good. He did one the last couple of games. I think uh, I actually saw your, let's say, your away statistics. And you actually have an amazing away statistics. So, I'm, you know, I'm pretty psyched about the second game. But the first game, if you want a recap of that, I think, you know, I think United got surprised that we're that good despite missing five starters. I think we worked hard. You know, I think we dug deep. I think we made it hard for Hernandez and the boys to make, you know, any chances. And then I think you played too slow. Let's put it that way. If you'd open up, especially in the second half, I think you could have won that game. We, we got a cheap shit goal in the end. And what, then, what you know, the I'm going to sit here and say Kessie's... Yeah, and then I'm going to sit here and say Kessie on the first goal. Do you think it was a handball? I don't think so. But, you know, it's, you know, it's water under the bridge, you know? They'd yeah, 1-1, one, one, right? And, you know... 1-1's one, a fair result. We're going... Are we are we playing at the San Siro or are we going somewhere else? I, I heard I don't Madrid. Know. Are we going to Spain? Freddie, do you know? <laughs> no, no, you're not going to Madrid. You're going to San Siro, man. There you you go. Yeah, go to yeah. the big stadium. So, but it's, you know, it's going to be empty, like, you know, 85,000 people usually, and now there's going to be not one, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a big loss, right? Let's be honest, you know, well, you but I hope, you get, I hope you get Rashford back. I hope you get Pogba yeah. back because they're not going back towards uh, West Ham, I think, right? They're still out. Yeah, they'll be out for the weekend. But you, Freddie, you said an interesting thing that I want to talk about. And I was talking about when we broke down the one, one result. Yeah was it's almost mm-hmm. to the point where there's so many matches that y- you don't even want to focus on Europa League, right? You wouldn't mind getting knocked out because you guys are in second. No. We're in second. You want to make sure. And you're a little closer. You have more of a title race than we do. City's running away with it. But even still, like, focusing on Champions League for next season, you know, who, who's got time for the Europa League? That's what I'm feeling. I no, feel the opposite. I feel you love, and I fully agree, man. It's, you know, and the problem is the money is not there in the Europa League. The, uh, look at the timing of the matches. It's on a Thursday. You know, how many people actually sit and watch some fucking game on a Thursday, you know? People got used to Tuesday and Wednesday because it's Champions League, but you're league on a Thursday and those timings, man. This it's was like Thursday in the night football. dinner. And it wasn't heard? like it was 6 p.m. there, right? Wasn't Wait, it? Have, like, you, have you not heard of Thursday night football oh yeah, here but, in America, Freddie? Yeah, but at 6 p.m., man, people, they got kids, they got the wives, <laughs> they got everything, and then put it in at fucking 6 o'clock, you know? I have to explain that to the wife and tell her you need to watch football during, you know, dinner time and football. Wait, wait, so the wives give you shit real. about football, too, in, De- in Denmark? Sorry? The wives give you shit about watching football in Denmark, too? Nah, I thought it was just America. You, you bet that that's a worldwide thing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, that's why we go to the stadium. That's why we get away on Sundays and Saturdays and we get to the pub on Tuesday and Wednesday to watch Champions League, right? So so now we have to kind of persuade them into, you know, there's football on what? Saturdays, Sundays, Fridays, Thursdays. It might even be on Monday evenings as well because, you know, there's such a packed program, you know? And what happens? Too many injuries, right? Look at the number of muscle injuries throughout the different, you know, squads this season. It's been, you know, I think when people look bad at this season, they're going to say there was a few surprises. Yeah, there were a few surprises. But look at the injuries, man. Look at the people who spin out and look at the different placements in the league, right? You know, it's been as soon as you got two or three people injured because you got such a packed program. You know, naturally, it's going to affect you, you know. Not everybody got a new key player sitting on the bench, which you can just take and step in, you know. Who's going to replace Pogba? Who's going to replace Rashford, right? You know, so, but I agree. I think EuroLeague, you know, for me, it's, it used to be called the UEFA Cup. And when it was called the UEFA Cup, it was actually worth something. Fewer teams, better teams, fewer games, more quality. It was, it was the good old days, you know, it meant something. Today... I'm I'm sorry, it's all bullshit until you get to these rounds. Right? <laughs> and the only the only the only good thing is if you win it, yeah. you're in the Champions League. That's the big price. So so I you know, to cut it short, I agree. Is it a waste of time? <sighs> if you're in the title race, no, maybe. No. Just maybe. Yeah, maybe. If you're in the no, title race, thing, how close are you guys? Five points, Freddie? To, uh, well, we dropped to six points. Six, six points. points. But still two, that's, two games, right? And how many games left? Well, I'm not even sure how many games we actually do have left, but we just closed on the half season, so there's actually a lot of games left. Maybe 15 games, wow. 16 games, something wow. like that. But but the thing is, look at this. Yeah, Inter so you should lose one, to right? us. Bloody, Freddy, you should lose to us and then go right. try to win the title, right? You should, it's very simple. <laughs> yeah. You're saying you're going yeah, to call uh, Zlatan. You're going to tell him, don't make it back for the game against United. <laughs> Save for the following <laughs> weekend. 
we need we need Pogba, man. We need Rashford. We need Slatan. You know, we need the big boys to step up to the plate on that game. You know, yeah, that's yeah. that's what we need. We need to be entertained. You know, the first game was. Let's be honest and fair, you know, there's not a lot of people who's going to watch EuroLeague after seeing that game. Let's be fair and say that, right? It wasn't really, you know, it was not fine. Let's be with fans, that. you think it'd be a little better? That was the something I thought about with like 75,000 Old Trafford, maybe 85 at San Siro. You might see a little more, you know, a little more edge to the game. It was a little, like you said, slow passing. Well, of course, there's going to be a lot. I think the atmosphere in general and all of the, you know, the different games, I miss the crowd big time. I think, I think you know, it's... It's so much football that you actually go to see the games and you actually get to hear the crowd during the games, right? And I think that played a huge part in this season as well. I think maybe that's why we did so well this season. There's not too much focus on us, let's put it that way. So we're surprised. There's not too much pressure on us, so we're surprised, you know? Was it like but going to the guys, San Siro? You know? Was it like going to the San Siro? You've been there, Freddie. You're oh, a Milan man. fan. What do you what do you, what do you got to say? We're going to play in it. No fans, but was it well, like it's, when it's packed? When it's packed, it's 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 out of this world, man. Eighty-five thousand people with flags, you know, fireworks, old school style. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's good stuff. I think in England, it's been too harsh. You know, they they don't let them, you know, have the same amount of flags and fireworks and everything. So, you know, instantly they even they even you know they throw off scooters during the games, man. So you know, <laughs> you can expect a lot, you know. So, <laughs> so no, but eighty-five thousand people. It's it's a lot of people, and it's a lot of people making a lot of noise, right? And but that's what we love about football, right? We need the bag, we need the singing, we need the crowd, we need the atmosphere. And and honestly, between you and me, when when you go to watch a game, you become one with the crowd, right? So imagine the players. There's no motivation, man. Where's yeah, the crowd? Yeah, exactly. You know? You're totally free. I mean, preach. I think that's part of the reason we could see that late goal to you guys. Uh, you know, some of these goals, some of the lack of exciting action. I think it's partly down to the fact that you know. Empty stadiums, both of our stadiums, like some of the biggest in our in our country, you in Italy and us in England, it's hard to play. Mm. That's what we've had trouble at home. We've been much better on the road, like you mentioned. Our, our away record has been great, but at home, it's you know it's hard to match it when the place is like an echo chamber with no fans in it. So, uh, Freddie, Freddie, real quick, what do you think about the second match? We're going to the San Siro. You're the Milan fan. You are a little unbiased, though. You, you kind of like United. You, you know us. You've gone to United games with us. You respect, I, he respects the badge. I think you cheer for United when you're in England, sir. Uh, you know, when you're with us, Freddie. You know, I, I think so. So um, you, you could call I'm it. You what guys do you think? For sure. I'm what do you with think? you guys for sure in the UK. For sure, man. There you of go. What, okay, you're, you're an American yeah, devil. Okay, so, so no, what, actually, what's the result? I want, I want to praise you. You know, if you, look at, if you look at the young guys that you actually have in the squad, right? You got a lot of key players which are relatively young. I think your average age, as I said, is like 26 point something. It's actually, it's actually pretty good. And the last couple of years, you didn't buy, let's say, big old stars, but you actually had a more focus on young people. So I think, you know, for that, a lot of respect coming my way. I think it's the right way to do it. And uh, Ahmad, fantastic buy, man. You, you know, pushing, getting this guy from Atlanta amazing he's 18 man and look at him he's, he's like you know he's half my size meaning he's a little shit <laughs> but, but, but look at him man did you see him going up what a goal against that in the header what a goal man amazing talent you know so so i think you're doing some good scouting i think the second match will be you know honestly i think we got it it might be tipping our way with a few percentages to be honest and be fair uh, and, score prediction think, we need a score oh, no, prediction no, 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 i want to hear it i want to hear it keep I know, going, keep I know, going. i'm not gonna interrupt you keep going freddie keep going a lot <laughs> comes down to the fact of who you got back i think rasford is going to be there i heard the news about that he said he's not ready for west ham but he's coming to milano right that's that's what i heard you got, you got, gonna, you got gonna, a better ear on stuff than we do. So, what, so yeah, Freddie. <laughs> Freddie's in Europe, so okay. I think you're closer. Freddie, what do you? So what do you? What do you think? What do you think of the result? What do you? How do you see the game going? Is it gonna be like kind of slow, like the first one? High scoring? It's gonna be more open. You know, you're the Danish it's gonna citizens be, and it's, dancer. It's gonna, I mean, you know it. It's yeah, it's gonna be more pace, but it depends on the players. Let's put it this way: if we got two Hernandez back, you know. Dalo is going to go out. Hernandez will come back. He's like a steamroller. He's going to come forward. We're going to have Chalanulia in the midfield. He can do some passing. If Slatson comes back, he's going to be motivated, guys, man. He's going to be fired yeah, up. Like, you know, he has just been out. He's been out for the last games. He wants to show, you know, what he's got. So, you know, 
Benjamin Button coming back hard, man. That's gonna be <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be hard for you guys. So honestly, I think it's gonna be an open game. I think that maybe we will set off, you know, nice and easy, and you'll be the aggressive ones. And then, then I think we'll see a lot of counter attacks. And um, I think I'll say we, we're probably gonna win three to two. I think it's gonna be a good game. All right, all right, Alex. What, what's your score prediction? What do you think? I like that three to two, but it's gonna be United's favor. So we, we take the no. tie, head on to the next la- <laughs> next round of the Europa League. That terrible music keeps playing. I, I think we're honestly, Freddie. <laughs> you said it. Uh, you know, the, you're gonna sit low because I think a lot of people have solved United by defending, packing it in, staying narrow, giving us the width. Especially if we don't get like Rashford back, I think it's probably gonna be similar to this game. I'm thinking it's going to be 1 1. I think this is going to go to extra time. Maybe penalties, United advance, maybe on pen, something like that. I, I, I want to see a 3 2. Shout out to the era of Skulls, Kaka, the big clashes uh, between Milan and United. I just see more of the same injuries, slow play, conservative, you know, not open up. And it's a shame. It's a shame. This I thought this fixture is Latan Pogba. It'd be like, you know, like fireworks at the San Siro. But it, it really, I think, mm. I think we're going to be a little bummed. I was rewatching no, that three-two game, Freddie. Let's be honest; it's gonna it's gonna depend on the injuries, right? You know, you know, if the if the key players are back, it's gonna be entertainment. If they're not back, it, you're probably right; it's gonna be a draw, something like that. It'll be tight, but I think you need to score first if you get mine. You know, you know, we're, we're probably you know pretty comfortable with one goal away, right? So, um, you know, but I'm hoping I'm hoping for a lively game. We need that to the honors. We need it to the people, right? We need your league on the mat. On the map, so you know. <laughs> Isn't it funny? I mean, like, uh, you know, Milan fan in the heydays, United as well, and both in Europa League. I mean, this is just one of those where it's tough to swallow a little bit here. It's a t- it's, t- it's bitter tough, taste. Man. It's it's tough. Did you did you see that Maldini? He met, he moved. Uh, oh, sorry, he met with um, Sir Alex prior to the game. No, no, I didn't see that. And the only the only no, okay, but the only comment Sir Alex has what. Europe League, <laughs> because the guy's like, fuck, you know, it's a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, he, you know, we want the Champions League. We don't want the Euro League. But let's be honest, we've been crap for the last five, six years, while you have actually at least been there, let's put it this way. Uh, but you, you know, you haven't been too good in the group phases, unfortunately, right? But, uh, you know, but you're still there. You're in second spot, which is nice. Brilliant stuff, man. We've what been you, crap. <laughs> We've been crap the last five, uh, seven years. Uh, as well. uh, uh, what do you make Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Freddie? What's your as a neutral fan? What's your call on the manager? When you look at him, he's just sitting out on the bench, and I was like, but maybe it's because I don't watch too many games with him. But he's not out there yelling at them. He's just trying to, you know, to say, you know, be enthusiastic, go for that. You know, if you look at Piola, which we got, he's always yelling and screaming and directing them and telling them where to go and what to do. You know, you got to be in the game, man. You got to show some fucking balls, right? And and Ole is just sitting there like a like a pretty schoolboy, man, with his curls, right? And, you know, <laughs> where is he? Where is he, man? No, but it's hard when somebody's playing defensive and digging deep, man. Then you have to open it up, right? But that's where the quick passing comes in. And then and I was like, like it said to you, you know, where was Bruno, you know? I, I thought he was going to be the, the key player to do the parsing, open up, play it wide, you know, put a little bit of speed. You look at James, much faster than Calabria, right? You know, play the guy, you know, open up, do something, strike, hit some passes, you know, be try to get behind them, you know. Kerr is so slow, man. You you know, I can outrun him for God's sake, man. So, you know, do something. <laughs> well, I think you have any more questions for Freddie, Alex? No, Freddie, I was just uh, I was reminiscing about heyday, you know, where AC Milan and United used to be. As I rewatched the three two game where United win in the first leg before you guys smoked us at the San Siro and when Kaka just like yeah. <laughs> Going through Einza and Evra, that unbelievable goal, and then uh, Rooney getting that winner. But it's it's gonna be a long way till we're back Unreal. back on the top, sir. But it, you know, soon enough we'll, we'll both be back in the Champions League, going for the true glory. I, I think we're gonna beat it this next season, actually. Both yeah. United, both Milan. But yeah, you know, we missed it. We haven't been in the Champions League for how long? At least, as I said, you've been there, right? You you better well driven. Let's say that as the club. You know, but hey, we were owned by a billionaire who, um, you know, invited people and secretaries to his own six parties. Out in the <laughs> islands. What can you, what, what can you expect? You know, <laughs> so it's not like we were, let's say, pretty well driven for a lot of years. You know, <laughs> so uh, big difference, big difference. No, absolutely, Freddie. We can't wait to get back. 
on the other side of the pond. No, it's you know, be uh, it's going to be great. To, uh, I, you're a closet Manchester United fan. You're going to come to Old Trafford with us, have a dark ale or two, Freddie. It's going to be great. Yes, yes. I will. I'll miss that. And Bishops, man. Gotta yeah. go to Bishops. Dude, what was that? Uh, eight eight Freddy, hours. Freddy's, eight straight hours. <laughs> Freddie's the, the best part, uh, you know, Freddie, we've known each other for a long time, but then we're like, hey, we're going to United. We're like, yeah, meet us at the bar at noon. Uh, game is at 8 p.m. Freddie's like, absolutely, let's go. And we sing an always at the wheel for eight hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. Great but atmosphere. Hey, that's what we're missing as well as people, right? It's, yeah. You know, love yeah. of some fucking football. Where's the... Where's the beers? Where's the going out with the mates? Where's meeting up with friends? You know, being one in the stadium. You know, all this. We're missing this. This is, you know, this is key for good living, man. We're missing this. We need this back. Yeah, and we can't wait. Hopefully, next year, San Siro, Champions League away. Yes, sir. We're going to be there, Freddie. Yes, We'll sir. go. We'll go together. That'd yeah. be awesome. Flares and all, baby. We're bringing the flares. I, I don't care if we do Spain or we even do the, the, you know, the MLS. You know, I don't care. We need some games. <laughs> we need some beers. Let's do no. it, bro. We, we're there with you. We're there. All right, Freddie. Well, You're the well, man, cool. dude. Appreciate your time, Freddie. Hang in there. Yeah, likewise. Stay in Boys, touch, my man. Take care, right? Cheers. Yeah. Take care. Stay safe. Later, bro. Take care, have my man. One. Sir, what an interview. Freddie, great to have him on the podcast. Great insights to United. Just football in general said, you know, going to the stadium, we become one. Love Freddie, sir. Absolutely love him. What a riot. What a what a what a guy. One of a kind, Freddie. Can't wait to see him on the other side of the pond. But just pleasure to have on. Uh, and what a perspective, sir. We're gonna be back at Vicious Blaze drinking those dark ales sooner sooner rather than later, I hope. Absolutely. We cannot wait. You know, that being said, how dare Freddie come on the podcast and tell us AC Milan's gonna win? You know, that that's one thing I gotta ding him for. Freddie, if you're listening now, you know, next time you gotta you gotta say United's gonna win. Who knows? I predicted that we're going to go to Penn, sir. You say we're just going to be three to United. We're going to go through. But before we get into the score predictions, the official score predictions on our end, sir, let's get into the injuries and then break down our starting 11 here as per tradition on the podcast. Physioroom.com. Mata's out. Pogba's out. De Gea. He didn't have the baby, sir. What's he doing? Uh, Cavani, Van de Beek, Martial, and Phil Jones, sir. Martial. There's a lot. There's no detail here from Ole really on all of these injuries. <laughs> the physio is working overtime. Who are we going to see? Hard to say. What's your lineup for AC Milan, sir? Here we go. This is what I got. I got Hendo back in net. I got a back four of AWB, by McGuire, and Shaw. I'm going to do Fred McTominay midfield. Bruno, of course. I'm going to do Ahmad on the right, Greenwood on the lo- uh, excuse me, Rashford on, on the left, and Greenwood up front. Sorry, I could have sworn when I when I saw your lineup, you didn't have a mod in, which is why I put a mod in mine. But you know, I think you stole my mod. He was he, he was he was certainly in because I did the agenda. And I I had mine in first, so I trust me, I did not <laughs> put a mod in after the fact. Okay. I like the, I like we the got, accusation though. <laughs> I appreciate I, the accusation. I saw Martial on yours. So Martial's hurt. I knew he was hurt. Alex likes to copy my lineups. Yeah, I yeah. know. Tactical genius. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> David Moyes, tactical genius over here. <laughs> I'm the tactical genius. I got the crystal ball. He still likes to copy my lineups. <laughs> I'm going to say Hendo in that AWB, Lindelof, McGuire, Shaw. You got to stay with that back line. Been playing well. Lindelof's been doing well. Lindelof, McGuire, you can't mess with that chemistry, sir. You know, I'm going to ding you on your lineup there. It looked in my crystal ball. Fred McTominay midfield. <laughs> it's, they, they start Bruno, Rashford, Greenwood, and Martial's that come back from injury, sir. I've seen it here. It, you know, it came to me in my crystal ball, my prediction. So, you know, I have to actually when we do the agenda, I got to put a fake lineup in. So then you steal <laughs> the fake lineup. Then I get the crystal ball. Then I get it right. There you go. There you go. Let's see if you get that score prediction right. A pen. Yeah, I wonder if you're going to stick with that. The Freddy call. Because that would, that would be hot if we went to penalties. Sir, booking the bookies. Uh, I think it's uh, Milan are favored now. United plus 240. Plus two fifty the draw, then plus one ten for AC Milan. So United, the you're getting your money for United to advance here. Score score prediction. So are you gonna stick with your three two from uh, the Freddie call? I like the sound of that. I think I think it's gonna be a more open game. I think United's gonna have to push forward. Vulnerable to the back will probably concede, but you know, United the backs against the wall. This is how we do it. Can't wait. On to the next round. I think it's gonna be stingy, sir. Like I said. United hit one, Milan pin him back, 
goes to extra time, goes to the penalties, sir. You know, I think these two teams probably as good as, you know, especially if they don't have Zlatan, right? I really think we just eat the, we nullify each other a little bit. And I'm seeing 1 1. Obviously, United, we got to go for it, sir. I, 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 as a United fan, they have the away goal. We need to be throwing the kitchen sink at them from minute one. And I want to see that from the, from the lads. Which should be exciting, you know, because all these games, especially with all the games we've had, they haven't all been exciting, unfortunately. Um, and we United fans certainly like some excitement. So we should be going for it on the front foot. You know, the owners should be on scoring. And there's goals. There's goals on this side, even with the injury, sir. Sir, absolutely. Let's break it down. We have some great news. United in the news. Sir. Apparently, Manchester United ready to listen to offers for David De Gea. Could sell him in the summer with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer ready to make Dean Henderson his number one goalkeeper per the Daily Mail. Didn't Henderson just make a mistake a match ago? Yeah, how many mistakes has De Gea made in the last two years? This is true, but in order to win the number one spot for United, you think you'd need a little more convincing than this. No, you would think, um, unless it was already being being had. You know, the decision was already on rails, and everyone was um, seeing De Gea leaving from a mile away. I mean, there has been sniffing. You, you mentioned PSG like weeks ago or a month ago at this point. I don't even remember. But it does seem like his best form has passed, and the best of De Gea is not coming back. So the thing is, I don't know if we're going to be able to move him, given his salary. His salary is like he's the highest paid goalkeeper in the world. And... Is he going to garner that kind of wage and attention elsewhere? I mean, PSG have a really good keeper. I mean, who's going to pay top bucket for David De Gea? I think that, it, hey, look, if there's a team, I think, uh, unfortunately, we should move him. I, I, you know, I'm a big David De Gea fan, and we went through, you know, a lot of errors and years at Manchester United where he was our player of the year. He absolutely saved us under LVG, got us single-handedly handedly got us top four. But, you know, as the game has changed, playing out the back, you know, I think the physicality of the Premier League, as he's getting older, isn't there. Like, you saw Hendo today with a big, clattering challenge, and he's all in. And, you know, he's old English. He is English. He's got that grit. And, like, you know, you feel a little bad for the Spaniard, sir. You know, the Spaniard comes to England, the weather. You know, you can only keep him there for so long, you know. You know, he's paid so well that I don't feel that bad. No, but his boy is Aguero. Aguero's going to leave, yeah, which but. is kind of weird anyway, right? He's boy like super boys with Aguero. Aguero's headed out after this year. I think he always wanted to leave United. He, The fax machine, we all know it. They all know the story. And then he played nice. And then now it's kind of the time to go because I think there's a market for him for sure. Uh, who knows how much the upfront would be because the wages are going to probably eat into that upfront fee, right? Someone will buy them, but they'll say, hey, we got to pay all these wages, so we're going to lower the upfront. And I think there's a deal to do, a deal to do with PSG or something like that. It won't be a big money keeper fee. It would probably be 20 to 30, get the wages off the books, Hen- slot Hendo in at number one. I'm fine with that move. Uh, you know, Hendo, I'm not going to say Hendo's guaranteed number one, but like you said, De Gea's probably passed it. For me, it was over when we were in the Champions League with Barcelona, and he and he messed up. You know, we got through PSG, Barcelona quarterfinals, and he makes an error that costs us. Like, there's no point in playing anymore, right? You know, you go to you go to the, you go to the Camp Nou, you give away what do you? I think he gave away one. I think it was two, man. Yeah, I think he gave away two. I think it was two in a game. Like, pretty much the game was over because of his errors, and I was like, that's it as a United keeper, pretty much for me. I always hoped he would kind of come back. Haven't seen it, you know, uh, and so if we can get rid of him, as much as I hate to see it, sir, I think we should. No, you're you're right. Because it's time, you know, at the beginning of the season, we were like, it's going to be good. Maybe he'll, it'll reinvigorate him exactly. the way like tell us almost invigorated Shaw and we're seeing the best out of him. It actually hasn't. And especially the way United plays now, you know, we're like a little bit stronger. So we don't give up the same amount of chances, the same type of chances we used to, or he's just getting peppered. Now it's like a lot of corners, a lot of free kicks, and he, you just see how soft he is. And that, that like he's that Dino punch out today, where he absolutely like smoked the Westfield, the West Ham player. You need that now because the, the league is so physical, it's so rough and tough, and you're like 
you know, I think the game has just moved past them. He he would do well in Par- in Paris or back in Spain. So if we can move him, it's probably time to move him. What was that Everton goal? Was that the, the DCL Everton goal where De Gea kind of half came out? Yep. You know that that that's to me that says it's like you know. But there's been a half dozen of those in the last 12 months. You know, like, and, and that, and as United keeper, it's like body on the line 24 seven. And I, and you know, if you see that from De Gea, you, you hate to see it, sir. You know, he's, he's a United legend, uh, you know, at, at the minimum. And sir, if you had the X-Files music, we'd play it because where is he? Why isn't he back? Like, this seems like conspiracy stuff to me, honestly, something had to have been said, Hey man, take a month, go have your baby. Like De Gea, we really want to get Dino in, see if he's really. The, I think something happened between Ole, Eddie, and all this because De Gea was pretty much told, like, "Hey, we need, we need a, we need a look at Dino." And then this summer, we've heard Donnarumma, United going in for our first team goalkeeper. So, if you're Eddie or if you're Ole, you're like, "Look, let's see if Dino's number one. Let's get him some goal games." De Gea, you take time off. We know there's interest for you. We'll ship you. And De Gea is like, yeah, I'm totally fine with that. Dino gets to see if he can do it. And then every, all parties are happy. Something like that, I think, happened. Because this doesn't – someone goes – has a kid and then they're gone for a month and a half? That doesn't make any sense. No, you're right. You're totally right. Because it actually you start piecing it together. Like you said, that the X-Files music will play it. Um, it all kind of came to a head when the Dean Henderson interest from the Premier League started exactly. coming around, which was totally leaked from his camp because he wasn't getting enough minutes. It's time to do it. I mean, it's like, you're right. It's like, why else? He, if, he, if he was in like the form of his life and United are in a top four race, um, they'd be getting his ass back from Spain right away and putting him in the net. But it's like, you're right. It's like, Dino needs a run of games. The hay is kind of on the outs anyway. Take some time with your wife. Have your kid, and let's find a club to buy you. No, I, no, totally. So, you know, look, we'll keep you posted here. This is a big one. Again, it seems like you bring Dino in, a lot of moving parts of goalkeeper. Seems like more moving parts of goalkeeper. Anytime you're messing with the goalkeeper uh, at Manchester United, you don't like to see that. So it's it's high-risk stuff here, uh, and we'll keep you posted on what happens with David De Gea. Next bit of news here. Benfica boss responds as Manchester United star Nemanja Matic linked with dream return, sir. Matic, I think he's out, right? I mean, uh, he's been playing. He's He was always out of favor, if you remember, when Ole came in. He didn't like Matic. Then Matic started playing, and he, he undeniably had to play him. I think he's getting to that age where, you know, the sun's, sun is setting on Nemanja uh, Matic at Manchester United. You think he still has a role to play? Because my, my concern is they're not going to buy a CDM. Like as backup, you know, they're not going to go out and buy a Rice or a Yeez Basuma from uh, Brighton. They're going to like <laughs> let him go and then we'll just have a hole in the squad because so, I do tend to agree that Matic is probably, it's probably best that he like moves on if we replaced him. So, yes, I'm assuming we would replace him if we sold him. <laughs> Like, like you said, is like the problem is Solskjaer assumes his front office is going to go replace players. Like he's like, yeah, you can sell the cock and just get me another one. And it didn't get him another one. It's like, yeah, you can sell the lady. Just give me another one. Didn't give me another one. It's, you know, it's easy to sell if there's demand, but it's like nobody's coming in on the back end. That's right. And if you think about Matic going, then you think about Pog going and then you're like Fred McTominay all day, every day. You know, it's like, it's maybe Twan Zabie, CDM, baby. And maybe Garner. I mean, but still, it's like you need to, you need to reinforce in the midfield. You have, obviously, you have Donnie. He hasn't gotten really a sniff. But my concern is whenever, you know, I still think he has a role to play because him with Pogba is a really good midfield pair. Just those two seem to play really well together in lieu of Fred McTominay combo. But, you know, ain't getting replaced. It's like, we got, we're not getting, we're not spending money. And that's the problem is you let him leave. Who, who's filling that position? The backup position, you know. Ander Herrera, another one. You know, I mean, like you argue, argue Donny replaced him, but what was that two years later? I mean, this is kind of the issue with United, sir. It's like it's getting the replacements late. You know, it's like Mourinho won the center back, then it goes to uh, Ole gets Maguire. It's like we never. Get, it's the timing, sir. The timing is off. Speaking of timing. <laughs> Speaking of time and being off. <laughs> Speaking of time and being off, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is set to seal new Manchester United contract as club hero gets huge, huge pay increase. Ole 
apparently has won a new nine million pound a year contract. I was like, he's getting paid less than nine million to Manchester manage Manchester United. Jesus Christ. I I would think you get ten at least a year. I thought he would be getting paid something like this already. Unbelievable. It's true. It's like, you know, actually like, when you, he won them top four and like got, you know, got the Glazers a huge payday, basically kept the club alive. Uh nine million feels like the appropriate amount, you know. I think like Pep could pay twenty. Pay that, he should be getting that today. You're right, exactly. You know, so Ole, call me. I, I'll be your agent. Be like <laughs> Ed Woodward, Maui Jim, bro. Maui Jim pays you more than nine million. That's like, why I think that's why Eddie likes him because he's not, you know, he's not asking for a lot. Okay. Uh, obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, polarizing uh, figure across the fan base. There's some they call themselves the Ole Outers. You have the Ole Inners, sir. I'm the Manchester United. I want them to winners. That's kind of where <laughs> I'm at. I don't really I, like. As far as Ole goes, he's the right man for the Glazer ownership, and that's the that's how you have to say it. So if you were to say Manchester United, unlimited transfer budget, unlimited aspirations for winning, is Ole the man to to drive that ship? For me, probably he isn't, mainly because of the CV. But – for the time being, when we have Glazers and they're taking money out of the club and we can't really just like – if you want to invest in a team like one or two years and win, is Ole the right coach? You know, that's not his style. He's the long-term, long-view, bring-the-youth-through coach. And that's why he's perfect for right now when we don't have a lot of money because of COVID. And he's done a great job, sir. So you got to stick with him. I love the extension. For me, it's the timing. Remember we gave him the contract – and then we collapsed for the race for top four. Sir, when a race for top four, you give him the contract after the season, I think. You don't do it now. This is too early for me. No, I tend to agree. Just because, like, you just wait to the end of the season. You know, obviously, we're going to lock up top four. No big deal. And then you just do it then. Ideally, he would have won himself a trophy by then. But even still, I think he finished in, like, second, third. Um, and Stan's trophy, I, I, I think we'd all be happy with Ole because, like you said, is he the perfect man for the job? Maybe not, but we have really bad owners and a really bad CEO. And it's like, given that, given it's going to be a low and slow approach in terms of amount of money spent and just like competence in the transfer market. Like they can't even do transfers, bro. <laughs> even if we had the money, they're very poor at executing transfers. They do one at a time and then like, you know, they drag it out. They, the interest is known. So Ole is the right man, given who we have uh, kind of holding the purse strings at this club. No, yeah, for this era, in this transition era, he's the perfect man for the job, and, he, and and the credit to him. Not only do they not give him the transfers he needs or wants, he deals with it. Doesn't let it affect team morale. He gets the best out of the players you think of this season. What an improvement coming to second, fighting the way we have. And then, you know, he's only Mr. Nice Guy, right? He's not blowing up the dressing room like Mourinho did when he didn't get the players he wanted, right? He got wrong by the ownership and he didn't just complete come out and have a stinker and let it ruin the team. He's only Mr. Nice Guy. He deals with the bullshit above. He deals with the bullshit with Pogba below. And you got to give him credit for the era where there's tons of bullshit on either side of the fence. Ole is good at managing it, bringing the youth through, and he's a great steward for this era of the club. As frustrating as this era is because I want – Mackenzie Bezos to buy us and throw three billion in the transfer market. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen, sir. That's only in like FIFA manager mode. So anyway, she donated enough money to buy this club. <laughs> it's like, um, but the problem is her money be going right to the Glazers, and nobody wants that. Uh, we could dream, sir. I think we're going to be holding off for a long time, uh, longer than we want, because uh, I don't think they're going anywhere. They just like they could suck so much cash out of this bad boy that they're going to just stick around as long as they can. No, absolutely, sir. Look, we could talk about Ole. I'm, I'm good on Ole. We've got the contract. Just timing. Eddie, just remember last time we gave him the contract. We melted down. So, like, let's keep keep that little carrot on the stick out there for Ole. Either way, it's the right move right now. You can see what uh, Eddie's doing. He's getting all the yes men, all the old club legends who don't have experience in, so then they can't really complain. So, you know, the Mourinho's of the world pushing back is not what he wants. He wants people... Uh, like Murtaugh and Fletcher and Ole, who are going to play nice with the Glazers sucking the blood. Let's get into the fan questions, sir. <laughs> Thank you for everyone who tweeted us, uh, comment on Facebook and Instagram. You know, we love the hot banter. Today was a positive day, sir. We got three points. 
at T. Zolski, quote, well done, defense, another clean sheet, and massive three points. I've slated Harry a few times this year. He was excellent today. Luke Shaw, outstanding. Mason is cursed at the moment. Both his chances find the back of the net last year. Hashtag glory, glory, man United. Hashtag lasers out. I agree. I mean, some of his play for Greenwood has been even better than last year. Like some of his link up play, some of his, his movement with other players, just his finishing. He was just like insane <laughs> finishing these chances he had. So it will come. You know, they were quick to quick to criticize him on NBC Sports. Didn't even acknowledge that he's 19 years old. It's like, yeah, he should be scoring way more goals. This happens, especially when he's a young kid. Um, and arguably, he needs to get more chances. We just don't create enough chances for the guy, you know, because he he's got goals in him. At Burkett Mets, zero West Ham shots on goal says it all. Not the prettiest performance, but West Ham never threatened, and we could have had three or four. Huge three points for opening the gap to fifth. Team selection is awful thin right now. Let's hope those 11 have enough in the tank to get a big result on Thursday. So we're going to need a big one. Hey, we're going to need to dig deep. You know, San Siro, thankfully it's not full of fans. That actually should be an edge for us. But going to need to dig deep and get a huge result on the road. At Bohem Boy for Life, our boy Devin, quote, glad to have three points, but our forwards definitely should have had at least two more goals today. McGuire played absolutely brilliant. Now on to Italy. Sir, we met Devin at Bishop Blaze with Freddie. He was singing Always at the Wheel with us for a couple hours. True Mank, you know, one of a kind. Uh, that's the great thing about this club, sir. You know, it comes down to it. Just put us in a pub. <laughs> Give us some dark ales. We'll bounce all night. A bunch of bouncing buzzy babes, sir. Sir, it might even miss the match. We were having so much fun. <laughs> That's true. That was more fun than the match, to be honest. Uh, we got a match? It's been eight hours at the pub. We we got a match. <laughs> what match? <laughs> we got a match. Uh, at Jamal Mota, quote, Sir, solid performance with a clean sheet to boot. Our lack of clinical finishing is the difference between a, being in a title race and fighting for top four. We need someone to step up and finish these chances. On to Europe. Drop that Hans and Franz beat. Hashtag Glazers out. Hashtag Glazers out. I can't wait for that Champions League music to be back, sir. I don't have to win the Europa League to get in. <laughs> sir, why did you even say that? I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. At United Dondo, quote, can we just be better? Proud of the win in three points. We've seen players hit incredible highs, and although they can't be replicated every game, where is some of that fire and intensity? Sometimes we ping the ball about too slow, allowing teams to get back into their shape. I felt this frustration at times today, but I do think we did a little better. What do you think here, sir? We let West Ham. I thought there were times in transition where we could have been a little more aggressive, understanding how quick they're going to get back into shape. No, I tend to agree. Um, but also, like, this is a tough team. I thought defensively off the ball, we played really well. Everybody tracked back. A lot of effort. I mean, you saw that kind of up and down the pitch. So that's great to see. At SSG Rock 17, quote, need to use those subs. Stop burning out the players all a great win, but take care of your soldiers. What subs? <laughs> it's like a finished squad. Ahmad, Matic. You know, tell it. I mean, like, you know, Dude, I don't you, we got the we got the result because he's made subs. Then we blew it at the end. So it's just like if it works, it works. Those are some facts are at Jim McLiver. Three points or three points. Better moving forward this time around. Dan James reminds me of an unfit Luke Shaw. Not the best. Still good, but has the potential to be really good when fully fit. Is James close to getting there? Can you see the potential to be really good or am I crazy? No, I think he has that potential, and I think he's getting better. I just think he uh, he needs some competition. He's probably not a starter. He's definitely not a starter in Manchester United, but he's a squad player and has a role to play, uh, and I think will only get better you know, as he grows in confidence and gets more minutes. I think he's got it. He just needs a little more swagger, sir. You know, you kinda, he's, he, he strikes me as like, like Greenwood's got the swagger. You know, he gets on there. Give me the ball. I'm going to score. You know, James has that little like, what should I do? I don't know. Like it's he's got the pace. He's got the channel. And then it's that that final decision. He hesitates. Uh, you know, I think hopefully with some more reps, he'll get rid of that. And we'll just see some Jan Dan James just like silky because he could be a real player for United on the wing uh, at Florida. CPA three two five quote solid win, but we should have had more goals. Couple of shots were agonizing, agonizingly close, and Greenwood and Rashford need to be more clin clinical like Cavani. Three points critical for top four race, and we move on. At Red Devil Woody, desperate for quality summer signings. None are coming, so it's down to the boys we have. 
Good display considering our injuries. Don't know why Ole didn't sub Rashford. This could bite our arses later, sir. None are coming, sir. None Those are coming. Summer signings. It's like because last summer we punted and then Cavani wants to leave. This summer is even more critical than last summer. And so it's almost like that hundred million we didn't spend last summer. We need to spend this summer. And if you look at what we should be investing in this club, you know, it should be a Sancho. It should be a Holland. We should have both of them and we're not going to get them. So it's like next season, I'm almost worried about next season more than I am this one. And this one I'm pretty worried about. <laughs> So don't get ahead of yourself. Uh, there's plenty to worry about in this season, but you're right. It's like we ain't getting no signings. <laughs> this is the team you got. It's like a reason to not, unless we're doing a straight, straight swap and getting Varane and for Pogba, it's like you shouldn't get Pogba away because we're not going to get a replacement. Like I don't think he would have sold Lukaku if he knew that his front office couldn't sign a striker. No, I mean, dude, it's uh, if Cav- that's the one thing you realize. It's like Cavani only plays every other game. Because he's injured, and we're like in the p- point where we need to be convincing him to stay. Exactly. Like that's you know, because we're not going to go out and buy a young proper striker. Like we should have bought Holland. We should go for it now. Pay a hundred million. King, even Josh King, dude. I like that's my point. Is like, I understand we're broke. Just give me the poor man's X. Give me the poor man Sancho. You know what I'm saying? Like we need to start. Like you got that. <laughs> you got to get somebody that. It, and I feel like there's like such a reluctant. And, and this is why Eddie running the transfers has been such a nightmare because starts out trying to hem and haw with Dortmund and waste so much time. And then like the last three days, it's like Dembele alone. Uh, then it's like Ahmad and it, it just gets so, so scrambly when like, no, we should just try to get like a good quality young prospect for 30 in every position we need. And if they don't come off, then so be it. But this is the philosophy. We're going to buy youth. And like stick with that. Like Eddie should communicate with the fans and say, hey, man, we're going to buy the Ahmad's of the world and we're going to invest in a young team for the future. And like I could buy it. But the whole idea that you do a mod and then you do Cavani, it's like, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing, dude? Like, do what are you doing, dude? You're not getting paid money for Lukaku either. What are you doing? Because you're taking what you can get. Because I bet you Ahmad, the fee was like deferred. You know, Sancho, they probably wanted the money now. We don't have any cash now. I think it was the same thing with Donny Van de Beek. It was a deal that was structured, right? So the money was pushed out. Look at those obligations, sir, in that, in that filing. They owe a lot of money in the future. <laughs> Not just the debt. They know a lot of transfers due uh, outside of when they just signed up for it initially. So deals aren't coming. They ain't no money. There's nobody, you know, that's the thing. It's like, who, who we got is who we got. Who we got is who we got, sir. That's the podcast. Thank you for listening to American Red Devils. We are four fans by fans, sir. If you can't tell, I mean, we're already worried about transfers. We're already re- worried about next season, sir. When's 21 coming? When's 21 coming? I don't know. <laughs> Within 10 years was my hope. And I still my hope. Like we, that we don't have to go more than a so decade. The thing, so that'd be the 23, 20, 22, 23, 2023, 20, 20, 2024 20, season. Is that? No, it'd be, t- well, how do you count it? Um, 10 would that be, was the 10th would be, season since he left. Sir Alex left the 2012-2013. Right. So that, you say 10 years where we're still going to win a title? I hope, you know, it, probably not. With I still I said it on like uh, three months ago, six months ago. Like, who can tell the difference? I don't think we'll ever win a title with the Glazers on us now. Like they won, you know, they, they rode that Fergie horse in the ground, didn't invest in the club at all, really. If you look at it, the last five years, he was here. And basically got carried because of just like the brilliance of that man. Now, dude, I don't think we're ever getting back there with them because they're not going to spend money this summer and City's going to get farther. Dude, and they're going to spend money. You don't think City's going to spend fucking money? They're going to spend a shit ton of money because no, just- I know you're, you're you're totally right because it's like the uh, the footballing gods, like kind of the, the sky kind of opened up and Pep was like probably going to leave. And this season was kind of critical. Like if he didn't get the players he wanted and then like they didn't play well, Pep would probably leave, which would be like, which would be like fucking great. Hate to say it, and then like a lot of other people would leave, and then and then shitty would just kind of be struggling. But the fact that like somehow they went on this crazy run, they're gonna win the league again. Pep's all in again, and then they're gonna double down with like Holland or some big names this summer, and we're just gonna be like, sir, battling, battling. The problem is, is like they basically said financial fair play, financial fair play is, doesn't matter, right? Like break the rules all you want, so City's gonna just keep breaking the rules, and we have. 
greedy, greedy owners that literally don't have no ambition other, other than making top four so we can get the money. And they really, they want to change the rule so they don't even have to qualify. You imagine how fucking bad we'd be if there was an automatic like Champions League because we're United? We'd yeah, be like no, 15th that's place. That's what we talked about in the last, last investor call. You can listen to it on our YouTube. And he talked about how they want to do a Champions League where we we're automatically in it and we're never out of it. So then we can just be worse and not have to worry about making top four. Hashtag Glazers Out, sir. We also got a Glazers Out sale on our website. Everything Glazers Out related is $9.99. The Avram Glazer Clown Nose T-shirt, $9.99. The Glazers Out Scarf, $9.99. Green and gold to the club is sold. Buy those, sir. We're selling them as cheap as we can. Support the movement, sir. We got to be protesting this ownership, especially if they don't invest. Look, hey, if they turn, they can turn the ship around. They can raise a ton of money, pay down the debt. They can buy Holland. They can do all the stuff that they wanted. But for some reason, they seem more occupied with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers than the greatest football club in the history of this planet. And it's sad to see. Also, if you want to support the podcast, support us on Patreon, www.patreon.com slash American Red Devils. Check us out there. Check out our website, www.americanreddevils.com for some amazing fan-generated content. And if you're interested in writing for the blog, sir, it's only for fans by fans. You can email us, americanreddevils at gmail.com. We're looking for anything, opinion pieces you want to write about different transfers, et cetera. We would love to have you contribute, sir. That's what it's all about. Fan content for fans by fans. So thank you for everyone who supports the pod. Sir, we've had an amazing week of downloads the last seven days. Give us our top 10 cities. Sir, number one, how you doing? How you doing? Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, Charlottesville, Virginia, Central District, Hong Kong. How you doing? Newark, California, San Francisco, California, uh, Hallsville, Missouri, number seven, Tracy, California, a Chicago, Illinois, Columbus, Ohio. And last but not least, your, your favorite El Trafico, California, Oslo. We see you at, we see you Norway creeping back up at 11. Appreciate all the downloads. Appreciate all the American red devils listening in week in week out, supporting the greatest team in the history of club football. Sir, we deserve to go back to the top. We've got to get these owners out. We've got to get the lasers out. Get your scarf. Now American red devils.com. Sir, you absolutely love to see it. It's been a hell of a year. The ups and downs, no fans in the stands, but we're going to be following this team every single match. Sir, can you believe it? It's like three months. It's a sprint. Three trophies to play for. Let's go. Let's go. Let's never go. say die, sir. Never say die. That's why, hey, hate it, adore, never ignore. We are Manchester United, sir. As always. As always, kicking a blue. Oh, God, oh, shit, shit.